By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Often Troll Cup. We have reached round number six and in round number six we have a Hall of Famer, a Magic Hall of Famer, Ole Rada. I mean, this is kind of insane. I'm so honored to have him here on Timmy Talks on the channel. Now, if you're wondering who is Ole Rada again, check out this clip to refresh your memory. This is Mark Rosewater. I'm here with Mark Justice. And we're here at the finals of the third stop on the Magic the Gathering professional tour. On the left, Sean Fleischman of New York. On the right, Ali Raid of Sweden. About to play for $22,000. So I hope that clip kind of refreshed your memory. He ended up winning the event. He had many more top finishes afterwards. I believe winning the Grand Prix in Stockholm somewhere in the 90s as well. I mean, he was 17 in this video. This is kind of insane. He won with a spider deck. It's really cool. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link in the show notes. You can click on there. And I go straight to the video. In this match, by the way, uh, he is playing a mono green deck. I don't believe there are any spiders in it. And he's uh, playing against a Frenchman, Sebastian. And Sebastian is playing a, a blue red deck full of burn. Uh, but more about that in the deck tech section of the video. Before we go there, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to go uh, straight to the games. Uh, before checking out the deck text, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to my Patreon page where you can become a patron of the show. And by becoming a patron, you're supporting what I do financially. So if you like what I do, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks and you can already become a patron for just one dollar right so please consider becoming a supporter of the show check out patreon.com slash timmy talks okay and now that you're fully informed i'm going to start with the deck decks and you know what i'm going to start with the deck the deck of ola rada let's have a look and here we see the deck of ola rada and uh, it is mono green as you can see mono green has been doing quite well in the swedish format um, when we're looking at the left of the deck, I just want to start there at the sideboard because there's something odd there, right? We see two giant sharks in the sideboard and you may be wondering why are there giant sharks in there? Well, that is obvious if you win the NoobCon, which is basically the world championships for old school, you get a giant shark signed by every contender. So just by looking at the sideboard, you can see that he's a two-time world champion with old school magic. So, I mean, the pressure's really on here on Sebastian, the opponent of Ola today. Uh, if we're looking at the deck, right, the deck is, is pretty basic. You know, this is what a green deck wants to do. Slam creatures the first two, three, four turns. Turn them sideways, put a lot of pressure on. What's interesting with, with this deck is that Ola is playing a full playset of Crumble, a full playset of uh, Ice Storms. He's not playing um, any Berserks. He's only playing two Giant Groves, not four Giant Groves. He is playing with three Pendlehavens, so he's really counting on always having a Pendlehaven on the board, which makes sense because he's playing with the Timberwolves, he's playing with Elves of Deep Shadow, he's playing with a lot of 1-1 one -one creatures that he can pump with the uh, with the Pendlehaven. Timberwolves, by the way, is quite an interesting choice. A lot of these mono green stompy decks don't play with Timberwolves. And what I find one of the really interesting things about these decks, because we're seeing mono green quite a lot in, in today's old school meta, is these subtle differences, right? So for example, Ola is playing with Timberwolves. It makes me wonder, of course it's a 1-1 banner, so that could be good in combat, but is it really better than, you know, other options? And he's playing, for example, only with two Spitting Slugs, where most players choose to go with four Spitting Slugs. So Spitting Slug, a pretty big deal in this deck, kind of the, the beef creature in here. It's only three mana, uh, two green and one for two four body creature from the dark. So it's quite good. He's also playing City in a Bottle main, which is quite interesting, right? Because that could also be a creature card that can potentially deal damage. Instead, he is choosing to go with City in a Bottle main. So that's quite uh, an aggressive move or actually not aggressive that's more a control card you you might say if, if you know what i mean right so i'm looking at this deck i'm thinking everything in this deck is basically a threat except for ice storm and crumble and city in a bottle right so ice storm crumble city in a bottle you could say chaos orb as well although chaos orb of course is just your top removal to get rid of, of an annoying blocker i think crumble kind of works that way as well because it's really in there to get rid of the of the mana stones right to win the tempo game but also to get potentially get rid of Mishra's Factories. I personally really love to crumble a Mishra's Factory. 
it gives me such a good feeling because it's so efficient, right? Just for one green mana, instant speed, you get rid of really a land and a creature. Like it's 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 a win-win. The only downside, of course, is your opponent needs to animate the factory before you can hit it with the crumble. So, I mean, but he's also got Ice Storms to do that. Anyway, um, this is a quick, aggressive deck. And I think, you know, in the hands of Ola, ooh, it's going to be a really tough job for Sebastian to, to beat him here. Let's take a look at his deck, by the way. And here we see the counter burn deck played by Sebastian the Frenchman. And uh, I mean, look at this deck. It's got a lot of burn, not so much counter, a little counter magic, but really more burn. It also has four Mishra's factories. Those are basically the only kind of half creatures in the deck, right? He's really focused on hurting the opponent. He plays with four earthquakes. Now you don't see that often. Um, he's also playing with three psionic blasts. He's playing with three detonates, which I think is pretty cool. A well aimed detonate can be so good, but sometimes it can also be so frustrating when you need artifact removal at instant speed. And I think a lot of players have to make this decision. Am I going to go for a shatter when I'm playing red, right? Because that's instant removal for just one red and one. It's very efficient. Or am I going to go for the slower play to detonate, but that can also hurt my opponent, potentially win me the game or get me closer to a victory. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's always difficult to make a decision. And I think in this deck, you definitely want to play detonate because you just want to, you want to hurt your opponent. And a lot of players, you know, play with artifacts like Jam Day Tome, Suchi, uh, Icy Manipulator. So there are a lot of potential targets when you're playing at a tournament like this. We also see four Maze of If here. I think Maze of If is quite good with Earthquake, by the way, because when you're playing a maze, what your opponent is going to do if they cannot destroy the maze, they're simply going to play more creatures so they can still deal damage, which is great because that means your Earthquake becomes more valuable. For that reason, I also love Maze of If in combination with Wrath of God because you basically get the same effect. A Maze of If usually lures out more creatures and that's exactly what you want with these type of cards. Now, um, you know, this deck, I don't think we have to spend a lot of time on it because it's pretty clear what he wants to do. He just wants to burn his opponent out as quickly as possible. Then he's got the blue power to kind of refill his hand. He's got Brain Geyser as well. Loa, you know, um, he's got Mind Twist, of course, the Black Splash Mind Twist Demonic Tutor to do even more really sick stuff. So yeah, this is a crazy good deck. I think um, a mean deck as well, a lean deck. Call it whatever you want. Um, I think if you're Ola, the, the concern here are those earthquakes that with like one earthquake, he can like completely destroy your board. I think that's that's your main concern. Um, the damage that he's dealing to you with direct damage, you want to play a fast game anyways. That's not really your concern. Also, the traits that maybe he can make, you know, a lightning bolt for one of your creatures. That's not too bad. It's just a one for one trade. And there are so many creatures in the deck of Ola. I think he's probably able to just keep casting creatures put the pressure on the good news for him as well before sideboarding at least is that those detonates don't really have a good target talking i guess the city in the bottles or the only target for the detonate maybe if he's lucky a chaos orb right but probably in response of a detonate he's going to uh, to activate the orb but uh, talking about the the city in a bottle it's not going to be super good of course uh, here in this matchup because we only have the library of alexandria alexandria and the two city uh, of brasses as a potential target we don't have any surrender befreeds that you usually see in these counter burn decks but like i said this deck hardly has any creatures only the four mistress factory so i think we're in for really quick games and when i'm looking at the decks i would say sebastian looking at the cards is the favorite but when i'm looking at the players i mean I think Ola got this, you know, he, I think just because he's Ola rather. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this matchup. Um, we've looked at both of the decks, so that means we're ready. Let's go to round number six of the Often Troll Cup number five. Here we go. Game number one here is about to begin. Ola Rada sitting on the right playing Mono Green. On the left, Sebastian playing a Blue Red Counter Burn. Look at him go here. Mox Ruby and an Island. And a Chain Lightning starting the pain. So putting Ola here on 17. So this is what he wants to do, right? Every every turn probably just play some burn directly to a creature. Ooh, we see a Time Walk there, Detonate. Went a little bit too fast to see the rest. We see Script Sprites here. A Pendle Haven also in hand for Ola. Mishra's Factory, so he's got a lot of action to go. Ice Storm there as well, I believe. There's a Time Walk by Sebastian. Yeah, that's great. Taking that extra turn. So is he going to target the Psy Blast directly on Ola or is he going to wait? I mean, it's an instant. He can just pass turn. 
He's got Detonate, Psionic Blast. I'm not quite sure what the other card is. Okay, there we do see the Psionic Blast on the life total of Ola. Ola dropping here to 13. Sebastian, of course, also taking two points himself. Going to go to 18. There is a lot of else being drawn by Ola. Probably going to play the Pendlehaven. Attacking for one, though. Ooh, that's interesting. Tapping. Ooh, he's got two creatures to play out. So, Scripps, Scripps Sprites and the Lanawar Elves here hitting the board. So, a lot of pressure. And, and remember, those Scripps, Scripps Sprites cannot be targeted by uh, the Earthquake. It's a bit of a tongue twister for me, the Scripps Sprites. Ooh, look at that. Just a pass for Sebastian. Having that Detonate in hand, nothing to do with it. I believe a black card there as well. Perhaps the Mind Twist doesn't have any black mana, though. Not sure what those other two cards are. Perhaps some direct damage that he's going to fire off after the Pendlehaven activation. There's the attack for three. There's the Pendlehaven pump. He's going to deal four points. Are we going to see a response? No response by Sebastian. There is the Mishra's Factory and more pressure. Argovian Pixies It's looking really bad here for Sebastian. Having a counter spell. Counter magic not that great against this opponent. Here's an Earthquake though. So he's going to kill two creatures. Problem though with the Earthquake is he's also hurting himself. And of course Ola is still has enough firepower here on the board. Can attack with the factory. Can attack with the sprites. Can deal five points of damage if he just doesn't do anything else. But probably has more action in his hand. Looks like he's going to tap three for a potential spitting slug. Taking his time though could also attack here with the factory of course. It's gonna animate, gonna attack, swing in here for five points in total. Sebastian dropping to six, there's the pass. He also has that hurricane in hand, so choosing for damage over that spinning slug play. Not quite sure though if he's got the spinning slug, I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure. Just a mox being played out by Sebastian. He's got a lightning bolt there in hand, but just, 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 just a one for one trade. He also has a counter spell, there's the pump, two, three. I like that he's doing this beforehand he's saying this is the pump there the Pendlehaven goes so he's got another potential pump attacking and he's gonna pump the other script sprites so that's six damage coming in there's of course the bolt that's gonna give him another turn tapping here to Ruby and now he's taking four he's gonna drop to two he's so low already untapping drawing a card for turn another counter spell yep that is horrible like <laughs> Counter magic can be great, but when you're behind, when you're under pressure, the card's just not that good. And also, you don't want to counter a one drop, right? It's kind of hard. You want to maybe counter that Decisive Berserk, which is not in the deck of Ola, but you know, that's a card you want to counter. Or maybe a Spitting Slug for three, something like that. But you don't really want to counter a Scripps, Scripps Sprites, and you cannot counter Factory, you cannot counter Pendlehaven. Counter Spell, it's looking pretty weak here in this uh, in this matchup. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's uh, Sebastian on the play here after losing that first game. There's an island passing the turn. There's a forest into a lot of elves. Again, a lot of gas there in hand for Ola. We see a lightning bolt. There's a maze of if. Pretty good. Sebastian couldn't find any mazes in that uh, in that first game, so they might be helpful here. Tapping two, so no forests in hand here for Ola. No Pendlehaven. Playing uh, another maze as well. A lot of elves and an elves of the deep shadow. There's another maze in the past. Wow. So we're getting really a different game than that first game. And I think these mazes could uh, work in the advantage here of Sebastian. Kind of making it a slower game is probably better for him. Tapping four. Okay, what are we going to see? Wow, even more creatures. Two scavenger folks and an Argovian Pixies. I mean, if he can find an Earthquake, I mean, that would be devastating here for Ola. Remember, four Earthquakes in the deck of Sebastian. Maybe he boarded one out, but I don't think so, to be honest. He's looking at the situation. Does he have an Earthquake? Could he play an Earthquake for one? He does have some Lightning Bolts in hand there. Also put the Shatter in over the uh, Detonate, makes sense, because Shatter can work, of course, on the Mishra's factories. So that's a good decision. Here he goes, attacking with everything. Of course, he's going to send back the Argovian Pixies and the Elves of Deep Shadow, and he's going to take four points. And there's a Lana Elves and a pass. So still, I mean, Ola manages to get four damage in, and I think he's doing... All that he can do really is just putting all the creatures out there and attack. You, you shouldn't be 
thinking about that earthquake because you've got a plan with this deck that it just played creatures out turn them sideways i think that's probably what you have to do in 99 percent of the cases but um i mean it is very risky if sebastian can find one of his earthquakes he's got a chain lightning in hand two bolts so he could consider starting just to, to kill off some creatures Tapping a 1 here for the Chain Lightning, it seems. What is he going to do? He's really thinking, what am I going to target? The 2-1 makes sense. Passing the turn. There's a Crumble, so in response, could cast a Bolt. Decides not to. That means more damage for him, though, this turn. There's a Pendlehaven, which is quite good. He can wait for Sebastian to activate the Mazes and then use Pendlehaven. So he's going to send back two creatures. That means he can use the Pendlehaven. So he's going to take five more points of damage. I mean, that's quite a lot. He's taken four and now five. It's quite a lot. He's going to drop to 11. Another maze, which is good, but with mazes alone, you're not going to cut it. That fireball could be great if he would just draw some more mana, passing the turn here. I think he's now keeping a bolt up. He's going to send back three creatures. He's going to wait for the Pendle Pump, then probably use the Bolt on that creature. Let's see what's going to happen. He's going to send back the two Scavenger Folks and the Elves of Deep Shadow. There's the Pump, and then we're probably exactly... There's the Bolt. But still, two more points of damage. Going to drop to nine. There's a Forest. Hand empty for Ola. Ooh, there's the Earthquake, right? That is the Earthquake. That is devastating. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and you can see him cheer as well, like... This is a horrible moment for Ola, but it's a moment Sebastian has been waiting for, and he knew that uh, that he had a pretty big chance of finding one. Four in the deck, remember that four main in the deck of Sebastian, and uh, this is devastating for Ola. Four cards in hand here for Sebastian. I mean, this is tough, right? Even if you can kind of rebuild, remember there are three mazes there. And he is going to flip on one of the mazes. So he's probably thinking, should I go for the Badlands or should I go for a maze? I mean, it makes sense to just go here for the for the maze of if. Because you need to get rid of them eventually anyway and you're in top decking mode. There's the pass. And now Sebastian can keep counter magic up. He can kind of start playing the burn plan. He's got that soul ring, which make, makes his uh, fireball even better. So could consider tapping the Badlands to cast the Soul Ring. Decides not to. Just passes the turn. There's another pass. There's a Chaos Orb. So it's going to be interesting to see what line Sebastian chooses. So far he's just passing. And I think if you're Ola, the reason why you keep playing out the forest is you're waiting for the Hurricane play, right? If you can kind of push that Hurricane through... You know, that's your, that's your quickest way to victory with Sebastian just on eight. Three cards in hand here for Ola. There's a Volcanic. So lots of, lots of options here, I guess, for Sebastian. Just passing turn, though. Perhaps he's going to start firing off some bolts on end step here. There's another forest in a pass. There's a City of Brass, a risky card. Again, such an aggressive deck, right? Every time you tap it, you also take a damage. So both players just kind of passing, drawing cards. There is a factory. Okay, so that could put a little bit of pressure on. I wonder if that makes Ola play something out. There's the pass. Okay, so he's going to play out a factory of his own and a pass. Ooh, is that a Library of Alexandria? Yes, it is. That could be quite good. Not sure how many cards are, are in hand there. Six, perhaps? Five or six? So that could mean that Loa could become active pretty soon. Tapping two. There's a city in a bottle. Are we going to see a counter spell? And it looks like he's going to allow it. Nope, he's going to counter it. For a moment, I thought he, he allowed it because Ola put it there on the battlefield. Countering it away, though. There's another bolt. Now, remember, Olorade is still on 19. So, despite the fact that Sebastian has this under control, he's not there yet. Oh, look at this. There's a huge hurricane. And, of course, there will be a counterspell here. 
There's the mana drain. Wow, that means tons of mana next turn for Sebastian. But I mean, there's not really anything you can do with it. Like, ideal an ideal scenario here for Sebastian would be that he has a, a Brain Geyser. Maybe he top decks it. He has that Fireball, of course. I forgot about the Fireball. So bad, he can now play that Fireball. I would, I would do it, to be honest. You've got so much mana now. You can deal a lot of damage. You can tap the Soul Ring as well, make it a Fireball for 11. Potentially tap some more mana there. Deal like 13 points of damage. And then you can finish the rest with your direct damage. He's not doing it though, passing the turn. Perhaps I was wrong, it's not a, yeah, it is a Fireball in hand, or is it a Shatter? Perhaps it's a Shatter, not a Fireball? I mean, I can see that one card is a Shatter, but it looked like that other one was a Fireball, but could be wrong. And now that Loa has become active, wow. I mean, it's looking really good for Sebastian, right? Because now he's going to draw extra cards. He can just fire off a direct damage spell every turn and draw an extra card every turn. Yeah, there's not a fireball in there, it seems. So maybe I, I made a mistake there. Here's the regrowth. Ooh, is he going to regrowth Hurricane? Oh, that could be dangerous. Sebastian's on eight. He's counting the amount of lands there. Five, six, seven. So he could do a Hurricane of six. Oh, this is so risky. But I mean, six, he would survive, so... I mean, he's got to go for the Hurricane, right? Is he considering going for the City in a Bottle, though? He is going to go for the City in a Bottle. I didn't see this coming. That's probably why Ola is a Hall of Famer and I'm not. Like, he's making decisions that I wouldn't make. I would go for the Hurricane here. Turning off the Library of Alexandria. Probably counting on drawing into another Hurricane anyway. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool move here. Let's see what Sebastian's gonna do. He's got this Demonic Tutor now. Don't believe there's a Recall in his deck though, or else he could go Demonic Tutor, Recall, get the uh, Loa back. He's gonna go for Demonic Tutor. Yeah, and here you can go, the, the Fireball's still in his deck, so... I made a mistake there, sorry, I thought he had a Fireball in hand and he could cast that Fireball after the Mana Drain. But uh, that must have been another Shatter. Ooh, look at his deck, it's thinning out. And let's see what card he picked. Yeah, this is the Ancestral Recall. He is showing it, didn't have to, but... Does it mean that he's going to play it out now? He's going to play a Shatter, though. Or no, it's going to play a Bolt. Okay, for a moment I thought it was going to play a Shatter on the City in a Bottle. I was already like, okay, why would you want to do that? Another pass by Ola. Looks like he's got a Giant Grove there in hand. There is Ancestral Recall on end step. Drawing three, finding a Chain Lightning, a Mind Twist. Ooh, that Mind Twist is evil. And he's got black mana for it, so he could twist Ola's hand. We play Mind Twist for three. He's going to tap three. Are we going to... Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's not a Mind Twist. It's the Abyss. I need new glasses. I keep seeing cards that are not there. It's the Abyss instead of the Mind Twist. Mind Twist would have been better here, I think. There's a Chain Lightning, so now slowly he's going to burn Ola down. Ola dropping to 13. And the Abyss, of course, a card coming in from the sideboard. Really good against all those creatures of Ola. There's a Factory and a Pass. I mean, it's going to be really tough for him to make this work. I believe another blue card there in hand. Going to tap two. Yep, that's the time walk. So he's going to take an extra turn. Is he also going to play some burn? Does he have some burn left there? Two shatters in hand. Not really helpful at this moment. Untapping. Now remember, he's not playing with any creatures besides the Mishra's Factory. So he's really counting on the burn package to kind of seal the deal. And 
And it's looking on the side of the table here thinking, can I attack? I mean, those two mazes make it kind of hard. It looks like he is going to animate. And remember, he's got all those shatters in hand. So kind of hoping for Olu to also start animating. Trying to block the, uh, the factories and then he can respond with the shatters. Changing his mind though. I don't believe there's any counter magic in his hand. Yeah, so he is going for it. Attacking with three tutus. And now Ola is going to animate, and now he can fire off those shatters. There's shatter number one. He's going to pump the other one, which is now a 3 3. There's shatter number two. So it takes care of both creatures. And this is the, 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 the annoying thing because he's now sending them back. And then, of course, exactly, Sebastian can. Um, you know, tap them again to pump the remaining factory. But here we see that crumble, though, destroying that big factory. But I always find it kind of annoying when an opponent attacks me with two factories and I have one maze. Even if I send back the other maze, he can still use it to pump the other one. So I'm basically only preventing one damage. Just doesn't feel very good, you know? Anyway, um, Ole here just passing the turn. He's still on 13. Now he's going to drop to 10, though. There's again the attack, sending back the uh, factories with the mazes. Ola still, or I believe Sebastian still having, is that a bolt in hand? I mean, I've been wrong so often with calling out the cards in this game. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. Yeah, of course, going for one of the mazes, that would mean that next turn he could start dealing some damage. Is he going to hit, though? There's a hit, so Mace is gone. And now Ola can uh, can start his turn again. Another Pendlehaven, more lands. I mean, he really just needs that one Hurricane. There's another direct damage spell, so Chain Lightning is going to drop to seven. There's the attack for four. It's going to take three, going to drop to four. Exactly. And Psionic Blast, end of the road. But I have to say, it took a long time for Sebastian to kind of get to this point. I thought after that Earthquake, it would be over very quickly, but it wasn't. And I actually see that as a positive thing for uh, for Ole here. Anyway, both players are going to uh, shuffle up again, and we will catch back up with them in game number three. Game number three, here we go. So we've got Ola on the play here after losing the second game. Let's see what he can do. There we saw the hand of Sebastian. Here we go, Pendlehaven into Lunarer Elves, passing the turn. It's a good opener for him. Are we gonna see a turn to Ice Storm? Are Govin Pixies there in hand for him as well? There is a Badlands. Is he gonna bolt the Lunarer Elves? That's a question. No, he's not passing the turn. Another Lunarer there from the top of the deck. Thinking about his options here. Don't see a forest there. What is he going to do? Is he going to go for Lanawar Elves? Elves of Deep Shadow? No, he's going to go for Argovian Pixies Pass. Ooh, there's a maze. So those mazes were really good for Sebastian in game number two. Really buying him the time that he needed to take the control in that match. There's the city in a bottle. So Ola is keeping those cards in to really take care of the Library of Alexandria and the City of Brasses. Tapping two here, there's the City in the Bottle. And it looks like it's just a pass, also Chaos Orb there in hand, Lana Elves in hand. There's a Volcanic Island. So Sebastian really light on mana, cannot play out the counter spell, for example, doesn't have double blue. Both players really light there on their mana, but I guess for Ola it's not a big problem. Actually, both players don't need a lot of mana, but I'm sure if you're Sebastian, you would really want that double blue. Going here for Chaos Orb. So very patient magic here by Ola. I would be tempted to start casting those mana elves. So I could do multiple things a turn. Also an Ice Storm there in hand for Ola as well. There is a City of Brass there in hand for Sebastian. Cannot play it out because of... That city in a bottle. The Mox Ruby there in hand. What is he going to do for three? There's a Psionic Blast on the life total of Ola. 
again, not something that he really minds. Dropping to 16. And now I guess he could start dealing some damage to attack with everything. Another option could be if he has a land, drop a land. Tap the Lunar or Pendlehaven, play uh, an Ice Storm. Gonna go here for a Crumble instead. Crumble on the Mox Ruby. And he's gonna flip. And he is going to flip here. Oh, sorry. On the, uh, on the Volcanic Island, I guess he's going to take care of the blue mana. Yep, it's a hit. Taking care there of the blue mana. There's the attack. Probably going to use the maze here. He's not using the maze. Yeah, he is. Okay, for a moment there I thought, is he not using the maze of it? But he is. So no damage there for Sebastian. Still on 18. Oladada on 16. Ooh, no mana. Mana stumble. So that city in a bottle is doing a lot of work here. Because it means that Sebastian cannot cast the City of Brass. And the City of Brass is so important. It would in enable him to play, for example, the Demonic Tutor in hand. Anyway, there's the attack for two. Using here the Mace. And there's another threat on the board, a Script Sprites. And I have to say, it's so interesting to see Ola play. Because he's doing things completely different than I would. Which, again, makes sense that he's a Hall of Famer, <laughs> you know, so he's probably doing the right thing. But I, for me, I would probably have played out a Lana or Elves here instead of a script, uh, script Sprites. And now we see a Mishra's Factory. There's an Ice Storm. Oh, man, this is rough here for Sebastian. Really low here on mana. There's a Fireball, but he's got no lands. Only that one Maze of If. Nothing he can do here. How many, how many cards does he have in hand? Is that seven? Or is it eight and does he have to discard? Looks like it's eight and he's forced to discard here. Wow. That is really rough. Thinking about discarding that city of brass. Discarding the wheel of fortune instead. I think that's a good decision. There's a spitting slug. So many options here for Ola, right? Could go for Lana or Elves and then, you know, still attack with two creatures. Could also play out Spitting Slug. Could go, of course, for Elves of Deep Shadow and Lana or Elves. And not have an attack. A lot of options here. Looks like he is going to go for the Spitting Slug, which is two green and one to cast for two four creature from the dark. There's a Spitting Slug passing the turn. So next turn he can start dealing some damage. Okay, there's a land. But it's a Mishra's Factory. Not really the land that Sebastian is hoping for. There's a Scavenger Folk. That could be quite good against uh, the Mishra's Factory uh, at a later stage in the, ga in the game. I mean, this is... Oh, it's really tough here for Sebastian not finding the lands. And Ola has so many options. Another really interesting thing about Mono Green is all these options that you usually have. He is animating here, attacking here for six in total. Sending back probably the Spitting Slug. You're going to take four. And then second main playing Elves of Deep Shadow past turn. Okay, there's an island. Again, I mean, maybe a red mana would have been better. Because he could play some direct damage, but... At least he's finding mana, and now he can animate the factory. I wonder... He's gonna tap. He's, he is gonna animate. He is gonna attack. And look at that, he's not even animating the factory. Afraid of a crumble here. And now we're in second main. Look at Sebastian's life total. Down to nine already. There's a lot of elves in the pass. There's a soul ring. He needs red mana. I mean, if he finds a red mana, at least he can play... Is that an earthquake there in hand? I mean, that would be kind of a way to... To stay alive a little bit longer. Of course, the downside of Earthquake is that he also hurts himself. Gonna tap three. Oh, there's a time twister. I like this. I understand this play by Sebastian. I mean, you really need to find those red sources. So we're gonna shuffle up, man. What a game number three this is. 
It's looking really good for Ola, but after this time twister, everything can change. And I think if you're Sebastian, what are you hoping for? Probably just at least a mountain or a volcanic island, you know, a red source. And then maybe some burn to just take out a creature. A maze of if would be nice too. Earthquake would be useful, but again, even if he draws into an earthquake, look, yeah, there's an earthquake. He cannot play it out at the moment, right? Didn't have a land drop yet. So there's the volcanic island. And a pass. I mean, is there, is there a bolt in there at least? There's a crumble. I mean, it's going to gain a life. Going to go back up to 10. That's something. I wonder if you're Ola, if you're not going to play out more creatures. I mean, you now know about the earthquakes, probably. So you don't want to become another victim to the earthquake. So maybe you want to keep a couple of creatures back. I mean, Spitting Slug is great against Earthquake. Also because uh, Sebastian's kind of low on life. There's the full attack, Alpha Strike. Everything into the red zone except for the factory. I mean, does he have a bolt at least? I don't think so. Hard to see the hand though. Using the mace on the Spitting Slug. That means five damage. You could also use the Pendlehaven for six damage. He will drop to four, but I believe he just taken the five. Okay, there is a bolt going on the uh, Argovian Pixies. That makes sense. So three points of damage. Sebastian dropping to seven. I mean, this is really tough. Can Sebastian come back from this? Another spinning slug hitting the board and a pass. I mean, yes, he can play an Earthquake for one. Which kills all the one ones. Then he's got the maze for the spitting slug. But remember, there's also that Mishra's factory, and there are two spitting slugs, of course. Yeah, this is tough. Let's hope for Sebastian that at least he's got another land. I mean, if he has a land, he can play an earthquake for one, right? Kill three creatures with one card. Exactly. Like you've got to do that, right? Dropping to six, but taking care of three one ones. What is he going to do now? Just a blue and island open like he needs an unsummon. But it's not in the deck. Like unsummon would be kind of okay in this scenario. There's the animate. Attack for six. He can send one back. Probably a slug. Going to take four. Going to drop to two. It looks like he is going to get one more turn though. There are the script sprites. Even more pressure on the board. Any Timberwolves. 1-1 one, one Bander. A rare from uh, the core set. There's a Volcanic, but what can he do really with this hand? I mean, if he Earthquakes away the Spitting Slugs, he's, he kills himself. He's on two. Those Earthquakes are pretty much useless. Like, he can play an Earthquake for one, right? And he can kill the Timberwolves. Woohoo! But, I mean, it's not going to be enough. Really curious to see what he's going to do. I mean, Earthquake for one and then a Bolt, and at least you can take care of one of the of the Slugs. Yeah, so Earthquake for one. So he's going to drop to one. Oh, man. I mean, Sebastian, he's, he's, I, I, I respect that, you know. He's, he's doing whatever he can to, to try to stay alive here. Yeah, exactly. Doing that play, taking care of a Spinning Slug with the Bolt. But uh, he's still going to die. That's it. So Ola Rada winning here. In game number three and winning the match here in round number six. Congratulations to Olin. Again, you know, so interesting to see these matchups. When you're looking at the decks, you think, okay, it's probably just going to be two really quick uh, quick games and just a quick match overall. But it was way more interesting. And it's really, really nice to see these players making these decisions. Bolt, bolt to the dome, bolt to the creature. How many creatures am I going to play out of your Ola? When are you going to play out the... The earthquake, and I think for Sebastian it was really uh, bad luck here in game number three, not finding the lands that he needed, and uh, 
of course, playing against Ola, that's, uh, that's tough, you know, playing against such a good player. But uh, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, uh, Sebastian and Ola, for showing your skills here on the channel. And uh, join us again for the, for the next episode, the upcoming episode for round number seven. And then we're going to have a look at these two decks. And here we see the decks of round number seven. So we've got Yoon Erik, who's playing a mono black deck, Black Underworld. So we've got Underworld Dreams. We've got the Parfait package with Winter Orb, Howling Mines and Relic Barriers and Icy Manipulators. It's looking like a cool deck, also some Guardian Beasts in there. And he's taking on Thomas Nilsson. Now he's got, look at his, his deck. It's insane. He's got Lich Universe. It's a blue and black, so he's playing with Lich. Yes, I said it, Lich. So I'm gonna try to explain that card on the next episode. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's something to look forward to. If you've got any tips for me, please leave them in the comments below, but that's all to come. For, uh, for the next episode. If you don't want to miss a thing here, because uh, I post two episodes a week, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you for doing that. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please consider leaving a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show, sponsor the channel, and it already starts for just $1 a month. Please have a look at uh, patreon.com slash timmytalks. And for that $1, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in on all the online events and your name will be also uh, mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.